So this week in the news, Mr. Bill Nye put forth a video. He seemed like a really nice guy before this. We were trusting with the children. World that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. Now, I for one think that evolution is a bunch of bull crap, but I've been told I have to teach it anyway. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. And, uh, you know, he'd put golf balls in the water, see if they sank or floated. I, you know, I don't know what he was doing. You're, uh... But I know that this week he pretty well stood in front of a camera and uh, looked at uh, every race, creed, color, anybody of faith and held his uh, middle, uh, well, uh, Bill, you tell him what you think. And I say to the grown-ups, if you want to deny evolution and live in your, in your... This is to the grown-ups, mind you. Keep on talking, Bill. When you have a portion of the population that doesn't believe in that, it holds everybody back, really. In the beginning, we were all fish, okay, swimming around in the water. You know, in another couple centuries, that, that worldview, I'm sure, will be, it just won't exist. And then one day, a retard baby fish crawled out of the ocean with its mutant fish hands. Really, why not? Your world just becomes fantastically complicated when you don't believe in evolution. And then that had a retard baby, which was a monkey fish frog. We need people that can, uh, we need engineers that can build stuff solve problems. So basically what he's saying is that uh, all you folks out there of faith, because we certainly didn't have engineers and stuff before this point, as he so aptly put, thank you, sir, Bill, for expressing, because it certainly was not men and women of faith that had anything to do with this nation, correct, sir? A uh, world that's completely inconsistent with everything we observe in the universe, that's fine. But don't make your kids do it, because we need them. So there you go. You're the retarded offspring of five monkeys having butt sex with a fish squirrel. Congratulations. Now it may be true that uh, even the platform, which he uh, is speaking on and talking to you through that camera, <laughs> required uh, engineers and stuff, who were probably men and women of faith, that doesn't matter. And he is more than welcome to come through that screen and mock at you and your families because, well, quite frankly, he doesn't need you anymore. In fact, he specifically stated, I think, wasn't one of the reasons why we need to do away with those beliefs is because he needed voters. We need scientifically literate voters and taxpayers for the future. We now, when he says he needs scientifically minded voters, he is not kidding about that one. His relationships, of course, completely unbiased people, the likes of... Um, Oh, Richard Dawkins, <laughs> who I go to for my science advice. I can think of no positive evidence for any kind of intelligent or divine design, neither in human consciousness, which is a mysterious phenomenon, and we need an explanation for it. Similarly, you might think that the origin of the whole universe um, requires some sort of intelligence. Once again, it's a deeply mysterious problem, the origin of the universe. Physicists are working on it. Or, or Bill Maher. Just because I wish for the demise of an organization that I think is entirely destructive to the human race, that doesn't make me a bigot. In fact, I've got Richard Doc. Richard, if you're there, um, can you tell you're a very serious man when it comes to science, and certainly nothing you say could be taken as a joke. Rich, can you can you talk to me, my friend? Sex change operation. Uh oh. Oh, you're a man. Not anymore, I've been fixed! Richard, hold on, I can explain! Dawkins, big fan, thank you. Oh, yeah. So if you're so smart, how come you didn't know that Mrs. Garrison was a man? Whoops, wrong clip. Sorry about that, Richard. Now, of course, the fundamental argument here when we brass tacks this out is, of course, that there is no God. That is the argument that's being put forth. Although God might exist, he is no more likely to exist than the tooth fairy or pink unicorns. So, once in a while I get people that really, that, or that claim they don't believe in evolution. Well, Bill, that once in a while came today. So, walk me through it, my friend. What is your science that tells me there is no God? Set me straight. Really? 
Evolution is the fundamental idea in all of life science, in all of biology. Now, Bill, you're saying that it was a life sciences, right? Which disproved, they, they blow the whole God idea right out of the water, correct? Now, when you say life sciences, would it extend to include, um, I don't know, cells? This is just a part of a, <laughs> of a cell, my friend. You know what the funny thing is, is that even my advertising has got more content than the entire video that you did today. But nevertheless, let's go through it, man, just for a minute or two here. Because I could keep going on and on. Cells are more complex than cities. Every part of this thing here is more sophisticated in its simplest pieces than the most complex technologies ever created by man. That's how complex this thing is. And it can duplicate itself in under half an hour. These are what make up the matrix of the human construct. Your human body? Yeah, buddy. It's made of a whole bunch of these things. Little bitty machines all running loose and the fabric of these things mind you are made of little bitty particles little bitty vibrations right all of this is uh, well you could view it as as like a vibration right which makes the matrix of the material world which requires more than three dimensions correct if I'm understanding sciences how many dimensions does it take 11 13 an infinite amount and the problem gets worse bill it really does because a single cell even if you started with one let's say evolutionary theory you did bare minimum we were brainstorming on how evolution could even work as stated by darwin you would have to concede that it cannot function under those terms and one of the next larger problems with it is that everything here is symbiotic everything here really is connected to everything else this exemplifies itself the most desperately in these cellular worlds because it needs all of those parts to function. Just like you would be missing your arms or your legs, you don't have extra parts that are mutating to become other things. Correct, sir? Everything here somehow magically fits together like perfect gloves, just like you see in that cell. It almost looks like Fantasia out of Walt Disney, all of these parts zipping around and they somehow magically know how to do exactly the jobs that they gotta do, right? And that cell is dependent on other cells, right? It's all symbiotic and pretty soon you realize that all of it is dependent on all of it, meaning that it can't come to be in a piecemeal fashion. I've actually been working on that with some guys to see if there's even a possible feasible way for that part. Just, I mean, evolution fails in a, in a lot, a lot, a lot of areas, which I'm going to walk you through and in in it, some stuff I got coming out in the future. But we were curious, even if it was possible, to demonstrate a part of it uh, could work. And I would be real interested if you've got somebody, you know somebody that can show how that part of it would work. I'd love to take a look at it. I could keep going on that one, man, but it's only going to get worse for you. I mean, you, here are these ancient dinosaur bones or fossils. Here is um, radioactivity. Here are distant stars that are just like the our star, but that are a different point in their life cycle. So, uh, run, run me through this, Bill. You saw some dinosaur bones, and you think you uh, you seen a, a distant, you saw some distant stars up there. I I wish you would have brought this up earlier, Bill. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm I'm pretty certain that that blows the whole God thing right out of the water. My Lord, man. But the evidence is is all important. I mean, Einstein's predictions fit in with um, with. Uh, observed fact and, they, and with a whole body of theory. That's right Dawkins, you're on it today man. Evidence is important. In fact I got a book coming out in December. Well I'm hoping it'll come out in December called The Theory of Everything. It'll take you step by step through a bunch of this stuff. Gotta make it extra simple for uh, guys like Bill Martin. You hand it to some kids and they're, it's like the safety lock on a cigarette lighter. I mean some 10 year olds and they'll, they'll be out roasting marshmallows in the middle of a storm and selling roasted jackrabbits. I hand it to you guys and be scared you'd be out there clicking the thing and freeze to death in the snow. Anyhow, what Einstein said, let me quote him back to you, in consideration of the cosmos, which I, with my limited human mind, am able to perceive, this is Albert Einstein, yet there are those who say there is no God. That'd be you, Dawkins. What makes me really angry is when they quote me and support such views. 
That's what Albert Einstein said. And you just quoted him. You quote him a lot, man. I'll give you the last clip, Dawkins. You're a man? Not anymore. I've been fixed. Richard, hold on. I can explain. Special thanks to Richard Dawkins for being such a good sport. Talk some clips in the back of this video about the theory of everything coming on both book and DVD. Hopefully, it will be out in December of 2012. Uh, Book Thieves is available, the true story of the time when I committed a safe robbery on the television pastor Mike Murdoch in 1999, Grand Testament to the fact that uh, people can change. What, don't look at me like that, like you're a perfect angel. <laughs> Tuck some clips in the back of this video about that embarrassing time period in my life and the safe robbery of the television pastor as well as if you look down there on the bottom of your screen that little logo nutshell news if you're a writer or a blogger somebody that just likes posting stuff online go over to that website and click the submit content button become a writer for nutshell news Whew. thanks for coming with me on that ride guys here's your clips this is Trey Smith of the God in a Nutshell Project. If you thought that video was good, you may want to subscribe to this channel. Tucked a couple of clips in the back of this video. I think you're going to like them. Papa. I'd like to show you this. This is the theory of everything. It's actually the cover for the, uh, the book that's going to come out. This will be the next one. Taos will not be the next one out. It'll be this book here. And every page of this thing, all the theory of everything, high definition graphics just beautifully laid out. I mean, it, not only would it look great on a coffee table, but it's actually, just like all my stuff, it's got, it's got some twists in there. Now, according to thermodynamics and physics, by any natural cause, this whole place should be one enormous superposition of randomness and nothing definite ever happening yet it's completely the reverse of that I mean this is so the reverse of that that it's almost like the universe itself is this enormous Swiss watch and mechanics that you really don't even understand only the tip of the iceberg of you winning the lottery every single day not missing once for the next thousand years does not even scratch the surface of the statistical odds of one single cell of this place. How does that happen on its own? Now this gets more intense. This whole place is made of little bitty machines all doing things. The receptors send messenger molecules to the enzymes and organelles crowding the cell. Some messages reach a network of tubes called the endoplasmic reticulum. In fact, if you took every piece of technology that we've ever made and packed it into a space so small that you can barely see it with our largest microscopes you would still be light years away from the technology employed in a single cell so here we are the unusual little blue rock called earth in an enormous black abyss called space anybody else find that kind of strange and when you dive deep enough into the very fabric nature of this place. Time, space, all of it dissolves into little particle pixels in a three-dimensional space. In fact, the physics guys might tell you that reality is an illusion. It is true that smaller things tend to come from bigger things. Don't worry, I got you on this one. Each one being infinity itself. And infinity is the number without numbers. And this whole place, everything here is interdependent. Everything here is connected to everything else. These are called prerequisites. Let me ask you this. What is consciousness? 
It's got to be a little bit more going on in there than uh, just some little electrical charges going back and forth and some biochemistry, right? Something completely intangible controlling something very tangible from the fingertips to the toes to the tongue and every part in between. Place where what's above translates into what's below, huh? So I might propose that. It's the spot where two dimensions meet. The ghost in the machine. Boom. Here's my favorite part, and it's just like a precious gem. You know, they'll get together, they'll make these grand computer models of things, and then there'll be all this calamity that it works on the computer screen. <laughs> it doesn't work in practical application. It's funny though, it's the part that'll really kick you. You plug the past into the present. The science lights up. In the book, I think you're going to have a great time looking at the, uh, the images perspectives and it and I've got one more thing to show you here's the clip I was able to buy a beautiful Cessna Citation jet cash a few months later bought another jet worth three times what that one was a little bit later bought a third jet bought them all three now that's Mike Murdoch roughly 25 million dollar a year guy and scheming buddy of Benny Hinn I want to love and be loved now this isn't all just jet planes and really hot looking women. I've been single 30 years. God himself yeah, it's not good for men to says, be alone. I yeah. am not enough for Adam. Yeah. He needs a woman. God doesn't mind you experimenting and exploring. He understands that. The Bible said he knew we were but flesh. Let me assure you, none of us are units. <laughs> This is a look at what his home looks like. Now this is the exact spot on the mansion property where I smashed a Cadillac through Mike Murdoch's gate in 1999. I want you to become a faith partner. This is 12 months, 12 months. I'm not talking about just sending a little extra check. Mike Murdoch was the darkest dude with his own empire that I ever met in my whole life. I'm talking about you entering into a covenant, a covenant, a covenant for 12 months. Give God four seasons. It was at the moment of that safe robbery that everything changed in my life forever. But to even get to this place called Hacienda de Paz, the house you see on your screen there, you've got to know where it is. It's buried in trees and these willows. You've got to go down this kind of very private secluded road over an English style, this little sort of English style bridge looking thing and make it to this very large gate. So here we are at the most pristine Christian school on the planet Earth. The days start blending with nights because of all the nightclubs and sometimes enough narcotics to kill a horse. Jason's working at a topless bar. It got intense. Say that again. The only thing that pleasures God is the thousand dollars. I want you to become a faith partner. This is 12 months. 12 months. Just call us and say you can expect my seat of a thousand. Thank you. I'm not talking about just sending a little extra check. I decree that you become one of 3,000. I'm talking about you entering into a covenant. A covenant. A covenant for 12 months. New covenant partners. Give God four seasons. I said get back, you filthy beast. Get him back in there. Get back. Wow. Get back. I wrote a little song for you. How dumb thou art. <laughs> How dumb thou art. Now, he said that song's a joke, but I kind of think he means it. Thieves by Trey Smith. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, anywhere books are sold. I've been on radio and TV for 20 years. And Trey, first, as far as the book itself, I'll give you an example. My producer, Will Duffy, his wife, Danielle, was in the hospital to give birth. And they had some time. So Will is reading aloud Thieves. And not only his wife becomes addicted to it, but people in neighboring beds, neighboring rooms, all sat in to listen to Thieves being read. It's like Danielle wanted to delay labor because she was so fascinated. Thieves was me pouring literally my heart out day after day. These were all written in a jail cell. 
And guards used to pay me when they were on ship. They would give me extra lunch trays to read them this book. So Thieves was originally paid for the jailhouse lunch trays. And then, after the safe robbery, when I'm on the run from a television pastor in Mexico, it really kicks into high octane. Sometimes I would just stop and say to myself, there's not a lot of really great ways for any of this to end. Crazy as it seems, though, it did all end well. I promise. Thank God for that. I'm pretty certain that you're not going to find anything like this. Anywhere. God spoke to me a few minutes ago. There's someone who has back tithe, and you have never been caught up. It may be a house you sold or some land, and this is the season to write the seed. And bless me beyond my wildest dreams. Okay, okay, trace my thieves. I'm getting a copy. Okay, enough. I wanted to tack a note onto the end of this video and state to you that that book, Thieves, from start to finish, no matter how fun it might be to read, does not in any way represent who I am today. And more than that, I've not only asked forgiveness in my own heart, but from a great many parties uh, who are in that book and who are not in that book that I needed to ask for forgiveness from. More than that, I'd like to give a special thank you to ministries, men and women of faith, churches and organizations all across this United States because they are not represented. The hearts of the people are not represented by the few that are just take, 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 take. I have seen so many, both great and small ministries, who no matter who they are, they would give you the last shirt off of their back. And I want to thank them. I'm Trey Smith. God bless every one of you.